getting back to the documentation and, and a little bit of the pre-mortem is why would the guy on the other end take the exact opposite trade? And every time I lose on a trade, I think, well, I guess he was smarter than me. He's not the greatest fool, right? What would cause the most amount of pain in the most to the most amount of people? And this is something I've been thinking about a lot lately with this crazy volatility we've been having. Linda Rasky once said, and I asked her where I asked her where she got it, and she said, I don't know, it's probably a florism. She's very modest from back when she traded on the floor. Anyway, paraphrasing, the market will do what it has to do to cause the most pain to the most amount of people. And a corollary that she said to that was the market will do the most obvious thing in the most unobvious manner. So when I'm watching the market lately, I'm like, okay, what's going to cause the most pain and most amount of people? And what's the obvious thing that it might do in an unobvious manner? And uh, for instance, is markets in a really steep downtrend and it looks like it's going to continue that downtrend, but what does it do first? It has the mother of all rallies first, sucking everyone in, okay? And then it sells off hard and spits them out. So I've been asking myself that question a lot lately as I'm taking my notes and watching the screen. So document, document, document. Now, I know I beat that dead horse on morning pages and um, hopefully there's nothing incriminating here. <laughs> but this is what I do every day. First thing when I wake up, I get my coffee first, of course, but it's really great. I mean, it gets, if you got stuff in your head, it gets it out. Um, you write three written, handwritten pages. And as I said before, I did these 20 something years ago, stopped doing them for whatever reason. And then in more recent times, I started reading a book by Julia Cameron. I didn't get past the first chapter where she said, do your morning pages. And I've been doing them for several, several years since. Anyway, just write three pages, write about whatever's going on. You know, if the dog farts, I write the dog just farted, you know, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't have to be uh, prose. Uh, what's um, I'm trying to think of his name? Prost or whoever. Ernest Hemingway or just write and get it out of your head. And, and you'll be surprised at how many things you'll resolve uh, from a, from a non-trading and a trading standpoint. You're going to find the things that you worry about, about 90% of them don't come true, and maybe it's 95%. And the 5 or 10% that do come true, you deal with it. And it's pretty amazing what you can deal with. Now, one thing it will do if you're writing day after day after day that, oh, I lost money again, I did something stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, I'm stupid, it'll force you to realize or face the facts that are you Einstein or Churchill in these trades? Now, Churchill said success is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. And if you are trading properly and you lose, you lose, you lose, guess what? You're getting closer to a winner. Like, as I say nearly every <laughs> webinar, as Douglas once said, and I've got Douglas, Douglas in my head from reading his book, nearly finished another reread of it. And that's probably one you should reread every year. The, the discipline trader, that is. But anyway, he, he tells a story. Let me see if I can tell it as quickly as possible. I told it so many times. A bad salesman makes a few sales calls, gets rejected, and goes drink his lunch. A good salesman makes a few sales calls, gets rejected, goes grab a cup of coffee goes back to the phone and knows that he's getting closer and closer to a sale. And if you're following a system properly, whether it's discretionary or not, and you know what you're doing, and you know a lot of this stuff all goes back to confidence. You're gonna need a little confidence, you're gonna need a little time. A year is not that long. I know some people are disgusted because they had a bad year. It's like, just relax, okay? And without going off a tangent, stop trying to do everything and just, Try to do one thing, do one thing good, and then do the next thing and the next thing. But anyway, provided you do have the confidence and you do have a conceptually correct methodology, 
then success truly is going from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. However, if you find yourself doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, and you're writing it down day after day after day in your notebook, then you have become the definition of insanity by doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. So it will force you to kind of face some issues and you do have to remember to go back and review those pages. Now, again, your trading journal is also an emotional journal, okay? It's not about where you got in and what happened and all, you know, put all that in there too. So you can go back and study it. And by the way, you can go back and study it, okay? And and that's one point I really wanted to drive home tonight is make sure you go back and study it. I need to go back and look at these pages that I write, especially like go, I need to start going over the last week's pages to see what was in my head, what happened, what didn't, what worked, what didn't. I need to go back in and look at Friday and see what happened on Friday. I don't want to, <laughs> you know. But you really have to review those notes. So just the documentation is one part. The most important thing is to review the notes. So again, like I said, last Friday, really bad. I need to go back in and see what happened. And, and you know, at the end of the day, a lot of times, and it, it's it's kind of scary to go back in, especially when you did something really, really bad, right? Or, or, or things didn't work out well. But a lot of times you go in at the end of the day, it's like, oh, it wasn't that bad. And yeah, I would have taken that trade again. Okay, this was stupid, but it was only a small amount. I did honor my stop and I'll do that once, you know? <laughs> now, even on good days, and this is where the deliberate practice comes in, what could you have done better? So I had a good day today on the intraday stuff. Um, but I took about three or four stabs at lab D and I think I scratched on overall and trade. And I think at the end of the day, if you look at it, it, it pretty much went up, you know? So how come I didn't make money on that? Instead of patting myself on the back, because I made money on some other things like success and stuff, I need to look at what I did there and how to avoid the same mistake if it was a mistake to begin with. Now, if if I look at my notes and it says, I'm just going to take a stab at this and I'm willing to stop out, it might take a few stabs, then that's fine. I don't think I document it as such, though. So practice deliberate practice. And that just means you're working to get better, constantly working to get better. Now, the another one of those things, I am guilty of doing those over and over again. But I started documenting them more and more and more. I don't have the manual nearby. But I did start one of those, what's her name, McInitty <laughs> manuals, you know, where she just would flip, 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 flip. And she had to, she had to manage Trump. That, that can't be an easy job, right? So she had the big folder with all her answers ready. And one reporter's like, oh, you were ready for that one. It's like, well, yeah, you know, it's, it's Trump. I, I have to be ready. You know, it's like, what do you think? I'm just coming here and wait. Anyway, so I got one of those manuals and I'm trying to use it more and more. And I have a tab for another one of those, okay? And I've been admitting some guilt throughout tonight and a lot of guilt lately. Uh, what, what of my another one of those is, okay, uh, on Fed days, be careful, you know? So I'm in here on Wednesday, yet again, okay, another one of those, right? You'll do that once, well, and I'm like, why is the market just chopping around so much? It just can't seem to trend for, for nothing. And then I notice in the Facebook group that someone said, <laughs> Fed day, and I'm like, oh, God. so I need to put some sort of calendar alarm, reminder or something, that would be my commitment device there on Wednesdays when there's a Fed meeting or an announcement. So come up with some kind of commitment device to help you with those things. And thank you, baby Jesus, on that and Facebook group for showing me that. Now, of course, the, the hard question is, what could I have done better without the benefit of hindsight? Of course, right? And I think the more introspection you do with all this, the better and better you're going to get. And I tell you, it's like every day I have this epiphany. It's like, you know, trading is just in your head. And, you know, I'm like, duh, but it really is. And once you wrap your head around it and, and circling back to Douglas again and saying, okay, 
if there's fear in the trade, then you haven't accepted the risks going into that trade. And maybe you didn't have the confidence you needed going into that trade. The beauty of all that is you could work on that before you go into the trade. Okay. And we talked a lot about this last week. I know I'm last week in at band camp, you last week at band camp and you. But again, it's two different things going into the trade and being in a trade. Okay. Two completely different things, two completely par different parts of your brain. So just know that once you get in that trade, you could be subject and you will be subject to the fear of loss or the fear of a gain evaporating, which would cause you to micromanage and take profits too soon. Just know there will be blood and know that it's going to be difficult once you're in it, a lot more difficult than going into the trade. And again, I explained that in a lot more detail last week. So check that out in a prior presentation. So what commitment devices can you put into place? I, again, just little stupid things. It amazes me how little stupid things can help. And I guess you're probably noticing what's uh, Ankara, Imparo, or something like that, like uh, Michelangelo said when he was 80 something, allegedly, I'm still a work in progress. I think we're all a work in progress. And that's why I get so pissed off when I see these these uh, these Yahoo gurus. By the way, it's so funny. It's like all these gurus are so smart with all this crypto, and now their strategy is to hodl, <laughs> hold on for dear life. I'm like, really? <laughs> wow. <laughs> anyway, uh, commitment devices. I'll give you a, a simple one that I started, and maybe these could be procedures too. But I dedicated one screen 134 inch monitor i have one i don't i don't want to count them. i got too many <laughs> it's a sickness but i, I had you know, years ago when i was doing the computers and stuff I, I always had more than one computer just a computer guy a computer nerd back then but i but i committed one monitor during the day just to the daily etfs that i like to watch the four daily etfs because I would get so pissed off when two things would happen. One, I would get chewed up on an intraday trade. And then at the end of the day, I would look at the daily on that and go, well, Dave, you big dummy was an inside day. It just stayed within that little bit of a range. And two, if I got in and out or micromanage or just miss it entirely, and I'd see a big fat bar on the daily chart, it would really upset me. So I did put a all four during the day. I keep them on one screen, and every now and then I'll walk over to them, take a look at them. Kind of gets pulls me away from from the you know being drawn into the screen, <laughs> the, the trading station, and just take a look at those to see where I am and which ones I really should be in, which ones might be making an opening gap reversal, which ones are still inside days, etc. And by the by the way, another one of these things I'm just thinking as I'm I'm doing it right. Uh, live here is as I talked about before Holy Grail Day. If you could figure out how to capture Holy Grail Days, in fact, if I could figure out how to capture Holy Grail Days and only trade on Holy Grail Days, you would never see my fat ass again because it, that's why I call it Holy Grail Day. Holy Grail Day starts at one end and ends at the other and it makes a nice wide range bar. The widest bar, say, for like seven to 10 days. And you can make a lot of money on those Holy Grail Days. However, on the choppy days, and you're almost guaranteed to make money on a Holy Grail day. Sometimes, you know, obviously it happens, right? But the problem becomes, as I am painfully aware, is getting chewed up in between. So one commitment device that I have created is I have a little formula, and I forgot the exact formula. I'm not teasing you. I've, I've got it somewhere. I, well, I have it in, in Think or Swim. I could pull it up. And I'm looking at today's range, just high minus low, the actual daily range, not the average true range. And I'm comparing it to the longer term range to see what percentage I'm in. And I've actually walked through this in prior presentations too. Anyway, the point is that if it's gonna be if it's gonna move a hundred percent of its widest range over the last seven to ten bars, whatever it is, it's gonna have to move 50% first. And it seems like if it doesn't move at least 50%, it 
it's still chopping around and it might not be worth going after. Now, of course, sometimes you can buy the high tech with this filter, okay, of 50, at least 50%, provided it's not a gap, that's an open gap reversal play type of thing or a gap and go, a little bit different, a little bit more complex. But in general, if you got an inside day, let's say you got an inside day and it's just kind of chopping around and the range is only 20% or 10% or whatever, then maybe you want to sit on your hands, and that and that's kept me out of a lot of bad trades. And it's everyone wants to know the secret to trading and the, the greatest patterns in the world, and the greatest setups. But the real secret is knowing when not to trade. And yes, you do have the greatest setup, and it is the time it is time to trade. But more important than that is the filter to try to stop you from trading too much. I know, figure it out, write me a letter. <laughs> So again, I'm going to circle back to last week's show. I would suggest you go back and watch last week's show.